for any mathematical induction, you need three processes. You need to test, you need to assume, and you need to prove. Now, this is a series because you're adding the terms in a sequence together. If you don't have the addition signs or subtraction signs between terms in an arrangement like that, you call it a sequence because there's a rule that governs it. So every term is determined by a rule. For this series, this term is, every term is determined by multiplying the number of that term by 6. For example, the first term has the number n equals 1 because it's the first term but you just have to multiply n by 6 that gives you 6 the second term will be 12 the third term will be 18 the fourth term will be 24 you keep going until you get to any term which we generally call 6n but what we want to prove today is that when you add up all the terms in n in this series up to term n what term is n? We don't know. But we're going to say confidently that when you add up the terms, no matter how far you go, you could easily just plug in the number of that term into this formula, and it's the same thing as adding up all the terms to it. For example, if you get to the tenth term, that tenth term will be 6 times 10, which is 60. What we're saying is, if you add up all these terms in the series until you get to 60, because you're going to go 18, 24, then you multiply by 6 again, you get to 30, and then 36, then 42, then 48, then 54, then 60. If you add up all those numbers, instead of you adding them up, why don't you just plug in, remember it was the 10th term, that's why we got 60, why don't you just put 10 here, okay? Your answer is just going to be 3 times 10, which is 30, multiplied by 10 plus 1, which is 11. So 30 times 11 will give you your answer. So that's what you could do. But what if the number becomes so large? Can you prove it that it will always work? That's the purpose of mathematical induction. So let's do that. Three things you must always do. You must test, you must assume, and you must prove your assumption. So let's go ahead and solve this. So the very first thing is to test. And to test, use the smallest number possible. We're going to test for n equals 1. When n equals 1, it means we're talking about this one. So if you add up all the terms in the series, when you stop at 1, well, the only answer you're going to get is going to be 6. So let's try and plug in 1 here and see if we're going to get 6. Okay, if you plug in 1, um, 3 times 1 is going to be 3. So you're going to have 3. Let me use um, a blue marker, a blue chalk rather. So we're going to have 3, and if you put 1 here, 1 plus 1 is 2. So you multiply that by 2. What is 3 times 2? It's equal to 6, which satisfies the first condition. It's always good to use this, the smallest number. Once this is true, that is acceptable. Don't try to be overly fancy, trying to use, oh, I'm going to use this instead. Well, you're going to get it. Or your chances of making mistakes will be greater because 1 is always easy to manipulate. So once you use 1 in the test, it's acceptable. So it is true for 1. So all you have to say is um, n equals 1. You just say true. Okay? Don't be too fancy. Okay? Just say it's true for 1 when n is 1. The next step you want to take is say, I'm going to assume that I don't know what this n is. I don't know whether it's 1 or 2 or 3, but I'm going to just assume that it's a, an integer k. Remember, we're dealing with natural numbers, so your numbers can be negative, okay? So, it has to be 
a positive integer, which is which are called natural numbers. Now, um, so that's what you have. So true for that. So the next thing is to assume. That's the next step. What are you going to assume? You're going to assume this n. We don't know what the n is, so we're going to say it's k. Okay? It's a positive integer. So we're going to say n equals k. We're going to assume that it is true. So your assumption is that assume it is true for n equals k. Okay? So if it is true for n equals k, you can easily write this out and say that 6 plus 12 plus 18 plus... When you get here, you're not going to write 6n. Remember, we've said n equals k. You're going to write 6k equals... And in this formula, you're not going to write any n. You're going to replace the n's with k because now you said that n equals k. So you're going to write 3k into k plus 1. Did we prove this? No. But we just assume that it's going to be true. Because we already tested n equals 1, it was true. Will it be true for n equals 2? Well, it should be true, but we're not sure. We're going to assume. Is, will it be true for any number that is uh, a positive integer? Well, we hope so, but we're just going to assume that it's true. But we don't know what integer we're dealing with, so we say it's going to be k. So we're going to put k here. That's the second step. You need this to do the, sec the third step, which is to prove it. Now, in proving this, you're going to do this. Proof. You're going to prove, we want to prove that it is true for n equals k plus 1. You see, this is where the burden is. Beyond this point, you're just doing algebraic manipulation. You're just trying to solve some algebra questions. There's nothing uh, beyond this. Rewrite this equation because we're going to prove that it is true for n equals k plus 1. If you can prove that it is true for n equals k plus 1, then it's true for any number. Okay, it is true for any number. So what you're going to do now is we're going beyond k. We're going to take one more step beyond k. Remember, we assume it's true for k. It means if you take another number after k, it should be true also, which is what we're doing. The next number in the series after 6k will have to be 6 multiplied by k plus 1. So we're going to rewrite this expression but go beyond 6k. So it's going to be 6 plus 12 plus 18 plus 6k plus 6, instead of k, it should be k plus 1 now. Is equal to 3. We're not going to write k. We'll be writing k plus 1. Where is it? Okay? So everywhere there's a k, you have to move one step further. So it's going to be k plus 1. And instead of writing k here, you write k plus 1. Plus 1. You see that? I'm going to put this in parentheses. So, we have transformed this. We went beyond, six. remember you have to write 6k. Don't change this k first. You're going to get 6k plus 6k plus 1. But, when you write the formula, you're going to be just replacing k with k plus 1, k plus 1. Don't forget to write this. You have to write the 6k first, because 6k comes before 6k plus 1, and you need it. Now, Let's quickly do our manipulation and we'll be done. I'll leave you a question at the end of this so you can test yourself. If you have any problems, leave a comment in the comment section. If this video is helping you or helps you at the end of it, please give it a thumbs up, you can share it, and you can also like it. Thank you. Let's move on. So, the first thing you want to do is get rid of this long tail. You don't want it in your proof. So you want to replace all of these You see that? That looks exactly like this. And we said all of these, remember that's our assumption, is equal to this. So get rid of this long tail and replace it with what you have in the previous um, assumption. 
So we're going to replace this and write 3k into k plus 1 plus 6k into, um, sorry, 6 into k plus 1. Remember, we're not sure this is correct. We're trying to prove it. So it's always safe to put a question mark. Okay, put a question mark on the equal sign. If you can make this left-hand side equal to the right-hand side, you have proved it. So let's see how we can arrange this so it works out. Let's open the parenthesis. This is going to be 3k squared plus 3k. And this is going to be plus 6k plus 6. Um, if we put these two together, it gives us 9k. So this is going to be 3k squared plus 9k plus 6. Well you know what? I can take out the 3. It leaves me with 3 into k squared plus 3k plus 2. Huh. Well, if you remember your rules of factoring, this is a quadratic expression. Can you factor this? Yes. If we factor this, I'm not ready to teach you that in this video, but you should know that. Okay? If you factor this, you're going to end up with 3 into k plus 1, k plus 2, which looks like this. You see that? This is 3 into k plus 1. And what is k plus 1 plus 1? When you remove the parenthesis, you're going to end up with k plus 2. That's it. The left-hand side is exactly as the right-hand side. Then you have proved this by induction. As you can see, there's nothing really serious about it. Don't forget to eliminate this long tail before the last term you just wrote. And you can now manipulate this to look like this. It will always work. If it doesn't work at first, go back and think again. What can I do? How can I make them equal? Sometimes you might need to work on the right-hand side to make it look like the left-hand side. It depends on what you want to do. Okay, if this video helped you and you understand what I did, I think you should try one question. I'm just going to leave it as an exercise for you. You can type the, the, the proof or just say I did it in the comment section and I'll be very happy to read that. Okay, so what you want to do is show that the sum of all odd numbers up to n, so we have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus all odd numbers which are generally given as 2n minus 1, that when you add up all these sums, it will always be equal to n squared. Okay, see how this is 3n into n plus 1? Yours is going to be n squared. This is what you want to do. Try and do this, the same manipulation. You don't need to change anything on the right when you get to the end. You want to work on how you do your manipulation. The assumption and the proof is what you need. So right here, I'm going to write QED. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Thanks for watching this video once again. My name is Newton Okewoye. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, never stop learning, because those who stop learning, I've stopped living. Bye-bye.